You are listening to the new man beyond the macho jerk and the new age wimp. Your host is men's coach and group facilitator, Trip Lanier. Do you ever talk to strangers? Do you only notice people who will get you laid or paid? And what is the best way to deal with guys who are shit talkers or haters? This week, we're talking with Jordan Harbinger from the Pick Up Podcast about how you can bust out of your social conditioning and unlock the charisma within. Welcome to The New Man. Today, we're talking with Jordan Harbinger of Pick Up Podcast and The Art of Charm. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Good to be here. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Um, so we're talking about charisma today. And I, the, right off the bat, I'm like, why should our guy care about charisma? What's in it for him? What's the guy that has charisma? What's 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 he got that our, our guy doesn't? Well, he's, he's got everything that your guy, your average guy doesn't. And, and the fact is that people with charisma make more money. They get the girls that everybody wants. They get the jobs that everybody wants. They're happier. They live longer. Uh, and this is actually true. I mean, people who are happy, who are charismatic, who have large social circles actually live longer. So you might be able to say, oh, I don't care about money or jobs or whatever. Maybe you have a trust fund. You don't care about either of those things because you don't have to worry about it. But everybody cares about how long they live and how happy they are. You know, that's the root of everything. So we can show that charismatic people not only have advantages that others don't have in terms of finance and economics, but that they actually are healthier. Now, I've always just thought that charisma is one of those things that someone was born with. Is it really possible that a guy can learn to be charismatic? Yeah, it, it is. And I mean, some of the benefits that I mentioned before are are just the, some of the tangible benefits and, and happiness is something that's tough to measure. And a lot of times people think, well, okay, this guy was born with this, this guy has this advantage, but it's the same thing as saying, Oh, well, this guy was born with the ability to get a higher paying job, or this guy was born better looking so he can get better uh, choice of females and things like that. And, and that's just an excuse that people think, well, okay, if I say this and I internalize this mentality, then I don't actually have to go out there and try and figure it out. But really, a lot of people who are outgoing start that way as kids, but a lot of people that are outgoing as adults didn't start that way as kids, and I'm one of those people, so I can attest to that fact. And a lot of the students that come through the Art of Charm were not outgoing as kids or even as adults, and they learned it over the course of a week with a little bit of practice thereafter. So I know that it can be learned because I teach it all the time. And I see the results coming into play very, very rapidly and the rewards coming very, very rapidly after people do learn to be charismatic and confident. Okay, well, let, let, let's let's define what it is to be charismatic. What's your definition of charisma? Well, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, everybody's got their own definition for this, but I would say that my personal definition for charisma is somebody that's outgoing enough to, to socialize with people, whether or not that person has value right off the bat for them. For example, everybody wants to go and talk to uh, attractive females. Now, whether or not we have the balls to do that is a different question in itself, but it has little to do with charisma and more to do with confidence. Um, in terms of talking to the strangers in the elevator or resisting social pressure or not caring what other people think so that you can take in your own path and forge it, you know, start your own business, uh, ask for a raise, that type of thing. That's where confidence and charisma tend to overlap. And so it's hard to pinpoint an exact definition for charisma, but I would say the charismatic guy, it's almost like, uh, I, I hate to compare it to this, but it's almost like pornography. You know it when you see it. You know what I mean? Like, you're not really sure exactly what it is if you had to put it into words, but you, you darn well know it when you see it. Uh, so do you have a guy that you can point to and be like, yeah, this is, you know, this is kind of our our, uh, our post. He, he's our representative of what is charisma. So we have just a common ground here, like a, a celebrity or somebody. 
Sure. Uh, for the guys listening overseas, I'd say Robbie Williams is a really charismatic dude. I mean, he's really confident. He draws people in like crazy. Here in the United States, George Clooney, Pierce Brosnan, those are two charismatic guys that come to mind right off the bat. And a lot of times you'll see like Vince Vaughn, for example, is super charismatic. Even in his movies, his characters are always very charismatic. He's outgoing. He says what's on his mind. He smiles a lot. He flirts a lot with uh, with everybody. He, he plays with people generally speaking and that's a charismatic guy so if you think of vince vaughn in just about every role that he's ever played he's a pretty charismatic guy okay so this isn't about just looks because you talked about clooney and brosnan and those guys are just like poster boys for what it means to be a, a striking uh looking guy but you're saying that even a guy yeah. like vince vaughn it's really just more how he is in the world being outgoing being willing to speak his mind that's what makes somebody charismatic yeah, it, it does. It's not just the ability to be able to speak your mind and break free of the social constraints and social pressure, but it's definitely got a lot more to do with, do you speak with people regardless of their perceived value to you? So for example, yes, I want to talk to the guy who is a famous celebrity or the rich guy who I want to buy something that I'm selling. You know, if I'm a car dealer, I want to talk to the customers walking on the lot, but how do you treat the person who's cleaning the bathroom at your office? How do you treat the person who is in the elevator? with you and you don't know why they're there you know they don't work there how do you treat the old lady who lives down the street from you you know those are the tests of a charismatic person because the regular Joe will ignore those people or feel like it's strange to talk to them or wait for a formal introduction a charismatic person will simply introduce himself take the initiative um, they'll help people that they don't necessarily know if they're going to get something in return I mean there's a whole lot that goes into charisma that's not just the confidence aspect it's it's about selflessness and it's about being social and realizing that you're connected to everybody around you whether you want to be or not and that you can't really isolate yourself so you might as well dive in with both feet and get to know everybody and everything in your world and it has a lot to do with the confidence with which one walks through the world whether or not they see themselves as sort of like this little pawn in in the game of life or whether or not they can actually roam freely and take what they want and feel entitled and, and deserving of what they want. You use the word value a lot in there and I guess this that how do I how do I see myself? What is my perceived value? And if that guy over there, if I perceive him to to have greater value than me, that's gonna have me not go up there and just strike up a conversation. Or the guy that's taking care of my trash outside, uh, if I perceive him to be of lower value to me, then I'm not going to relate with him either. But what you're saying is the charismatic guy just says to hell with it. We're all humans. We're all just people here. I'm going to talk to anybody and just treat them like a human being. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And and here at the Art of Charm, actually, and on the show, on the Show Pickup podcast, we actually have a value scale that we use that might be a little bit more helpful in relating to the guy that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, let's hear about it. As guys rate women, uh, well, as some guys, I should say, rate women, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which I think is actually unfair and kind of ridiculous, we decided to relate things to men in a similar way because the scale is already set in every guy's mind, you know, in high school, we go through this. So we just, we decided to do the exact same thing for guys here at the Art of Charm. And the way that we rate the guys isn't on their looks as guys rate women, but on their charisma and on the value scale that we've developed here. So you've got the four levels, essentially six, seven, eight, nine. And of course, 10 is always the unattainable, but I'll get into that in a little bit. So somebody whose value we say is a six, that person is submissive. That's the guy who, when you step on their foot, they apologize to you for being in your way, or they don't look at you in the eye. They're always thinking, okay, well, I have to apologize for everything. I'm in the way. They're submissive to a large degree to the point where they basically apologize for their existence. And uh, a lot of guys do this, and a lot of guys have been beaten into submission, uh, either literally or or figuratively, and they become this submissive. And it, it's a way of coping. It's a way of getting through life without sort of creating any sort of resistance. You know, by always giving away uh, and always giving away their own value, they basically manage to skirt by without attracting attention, which is the way they like it. They're comfortable being invisible, and a lot of times these guys aren't very social. Um, Somebody who's a seven is uh, somebody who's constantly trying to drag people's value down to his level because he doesn't feel like he has that much value. So the seven is the guy who 
as soon as, you know, you'll be talking with somebody and you'll say, oh, yeah, did you hear that uh, Trip got a new car? And other guys will be like, yeah, sure, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's a nice new uh, you know, Volvo or BMW or whatever. The seven will wait until Trip leaves to wait until you leave, and then he'll turn to the rest of us and go, whatever, man, that car sucks. That guy's got crap tasting cars. Or, you know, you'll meet a new girl, she'll be a real sweetheart, and he'll go, yeah, whatever, dude, that girl's not even hot. You know, she doesn't have any boobs. What's his problem? You know, he, I, I, you know that's ridiculous. I can't believe he's dating that girl. He's a guy who's always trying to drag people down. Whether it's to their face or whether or not it's behind their back is pretty much irrelevant. A guy who's got the seven in terms of value is constantly trying to drag people down to his level of value because he doesn't perceive that he himself has that much value, but he's not willing to submit because he's actually angry about other people having a higher value than him. He's actually pissed off about it, and he, he's instead of actually raising himself up, he just wants to drag everybody else down with him. Now, an eight... And eight is, uh, and you guys, by the way, you'll see these value archetypes in every movie that you see. You'll see them in every person that you deal with from day in and day out, and from the minute you wake up in the morning and go to work till the minute you go to sleep at night. Everybody in your life is one of these value archetypes, and everybody fluctuates between all of them at some point in their life. So once you guys start learning these, you'll be able to see these absolutely everywhere and it's going to change the way that you look at people from now on so it's kind of a big deal um, moving on number eight or somebody whose value is an eight is this is normal dudes this is where normal guys come in most guys i would say are like this and it's good the guy is relatively decent high value in terms of social value uh but he's competitive you know he's constantly comparing himself to other guys he's constantly comparing his situation his physical looks his level of income anything and everything gets compared and a lot of times in extreme manifestations of this a guy will be the, known as the one upper guy so he'll be the guy who often again in extreme cases when trip and i are hanging out when you and i are hanging out at the bar and we meet some other guys and you say, man, I just got this new car. You guys should uh, come check it out sometime. And you got some other guy says, oh, what kind of car is it? You say it's a Lexus. And he goes, oh, man, yeah, I, I, uh, I just got a new, you know, Maserati. It's kind of like a Lexus, only it's, you know, it's important. It's much nicer. And, you know, it might not be that blatant, but it will be something along the lines of, yeah, that's great. But what I have is just a little bit better. Uh -huh. And uh, it'll be, you know, the guy who in high school during the football season you ran a, a good fast 40 but his was just a little bit faster or you took a quiz and you passed and you did well but he got one sliver of a grade higher and he just wants you to know that right because he his level of value is propped up exclusively on how he compares to other people and that's where most people fall in line whether or not it's malicious or not whether or not it's really extreme or overt is another case but most people are constantly especially guys are constantly measuring ourselves against other guys. That's just the way that we are. Got and it. um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, society would never have evolved if one guy wasn't trying to build a bigger building or get a bigger kingdom than the next guy. We, we wouldn't be, we'd still be living in huts if we didn't have this mechanism. So having that level of value, there's something to be said for it, but it's a little bit outdated in terms of today's leadership models because it's based on old biology with a bigger gorilla you know, could beat everybody else into submission. It. Um, nowadays, it's all about cooperation. And as you can see in any leadership manual or any uh, business manual, the most powerful CEOs and companies nowadays are the ones that cooperate with everybody for the most part or get people to cooperate. And that's where, that's where the nines and tens come in. Now, the nines and tens, these are guys that see their value as extremely high, but they also see everybody else's value or potential value as equal to theirs. So if I'm walking around and I feel like I'm going to be, I'm going to be a 10 today. I'm going to be a nine today. R really the 10 is just the unattainable end all. And the reason we have it that way is because when guys say, Oh, this girl, she's a total 10. Usually what they're saying is this girl's out of my league or this girl's better than any girl that I'd normally have access to. So nine and 10 is really the same thing. Um, you're walking around, you're being that nine, you're saying, okay, you know, today I'm in a great mood. I'm going to go around. I'm going to say hi to everybody. Uh, this is, I, I wake up in the morning. I've always,
positive at people's day. People enjoy being around me. That's the way it is. You know, you walk in the lobby, you say hello to the janitor, you say hello to the CEO in the same sentence. It's the same thing. And when you go around in, in your life and you find out ways to make other people feel better or give them some sort of value and, and make them feel good about themselves, that's somebody that not only everybody wants to be around, but that's somebody who everybody wants to give value back to in return. And that's really important to know because if I'm giving value to everybody and then suddenly I need something, I've got an entire army of people that I've met over the past couple of weeks, months, years who are just trying to figure out ways in which they can give back, right. ways in which they can help. You know what I mean? And that's really important. And it's something that we've seen in action uh, in developing the Pickup Podcast. Because if, if you guys don't know about the show, it's free and it's been free for three years. And so guys are always writing in, listen, man, you guys have changed my life. How do I help you? So when I need something even small, you know, on the internet, an invitation to something or some web help or something like that, or graphic design, I put the call out on Facebook or on the show and you get hundreds or even thousands of replies. And that's really, really powerful, especially when you extrapolate that into your personal daily life. I mean, if, if you've got a guy who walks in late from work and everybody hates him, the boss might find out, hey, you know, Trip was late for work again today, huh? That's the rumor around the office. But if everybody loves you, you might you, you might be able to get away with it a little bit, you know? Or maybe you get a flat tire on the way to the office, and somebody you know sees you, but they're kind of afraid of you. You're kind of a dick. Or maybe they really just don't like you, and they're glad. But if you're the guy who everyone likes, you're the guy who's got that charisma, who makes everyone feel better, people are going to actually rush to your aid. And, and it's not only in those extreme circumstances that value comes back to you. It's in every little interaction all day. You know, you walk in and you need some coffee. You look like you got a hangover. If people are really interested in you because you've been really interested in them and making them feel good, you're, you're going to find a much easier path through life in general, not just in the day to day. Got it. Got it. And so, I mean, how does a guy actually become charismatic? Because it seems like this is a nice list of qualities that the charismatic guy has, but do you actually help guys transform themselves and their own sense of value? Or do you just give them a way to act? Well, you actually have to transform because it's really impossible to act like you're high value, like you're charismatic without actually being that way. Um, and that's both good and bad. Of course, it's, it's, it's tough because it means I can't just tell you, okay, be charismatic. Here's how you act. And here's how you pretend to be charismatic. But what's great about it is once you see charisma in action and once you know how to do it, once you understand the qualities and the dynamics behind it, all you have to do is decide to start being that way. And then eventually through a couple of drills and exercises that we teach here in class during the art of charm uh, workshops, you can actually develop the confidence to put it into play. Once you've got that confidence and once you decide I may be charismatic, the world is your oyster, really. I mean, guys who come to the program here often report that they get raises at work, more responsibility, promotions. They almost always get a girlfriend a couple of months after or even shorter after attending a boot camp here because everybody wants to be around somebody who's charismatic. And not only that, but once you become that charismatic guy, you can deal with all the submissive sixes, all the aggressive sevens, and all the com uh, competitive eights. It's really, really easy because all you have to do is give those people value where they're lacking it, and they will immediately open up to you. Got so it. So it's really, it's really easy to navigate the different personas and archetypes in your day-to-day -day life. You'll never again go, man, what's my boss's problem? He's such a jerk. You know what I mean? You'll never have that problem again because you'll realize it's always, all that stuff always comes down to a value, a value imbalance or a value issue on any given day. Anybody's crappy mood can be reversed. Um, anybody's little tiff issue with you, anybody's little chest, you know, the chest pounding kind of competition aspect you've got going on in the office or at school or at the gym or wherever on the field. You know, if you're on a sports team or whatever, all that stuff can be remedied just by balancing out the value. And can it be taught? Absolutely. It can be taught. It's not a method of acting. It's definitely a set of beliefs that you need to internalize. But once you start going out there and practicing and drilling this stuff, you'll get so much positive feedback from the people around you. You'll never want to go back to your other belief system because there's just no reason to do it because it's not serving you as well as this one will. 
Got it. Got it. So what's one simple practice? What's one thing the guy listening out there, what, what can he do today that will help him start to transform these beliefs and help him ultimately be more charismatic? Well, I think a good place to start, and I know it's probably been said before, especially on my show, it's been said before, is go out there and be social with everyone. And I know guys are like, oh, I've heard that before. Well, this is not a good tip. But when guys think I'm going to go out there and be social with everyone, what they're envisioning in their head is I'm going to start talking to all the girls or I'm going to start talking to all the guys out there. But what they don't think of is when you're in the elevator or you're on the subway and you sit next to a little kid and she's with her mom and, you know, her mom's boyfriend or her dad or whatever, do you say anything to those people? Do you talk to those people at all? Or do you just sit there and stare at each other, sitting across from each other on the benches, pre- pretending to read the ads or, you know, watch the walls go by through the subway window? I mean, what are you really doing? You get your headphones in, staring at the ground, or you're pretending to read Us Weekly or something. I mean, what are you doing in those situations? When you're walking around, when I used to live in Manhattan, when, when I'm walking around in the streets, I'm smiling at people, I'm saying hello to people that I don't know, and that really opens people up and gets people smiling. You can make small talk with anybody. And small talk is a good place to start because there's really no emotional commitment there. You know, you can say anything, really. Hey, how you doing, man? Oh, good. Yeah, it's really hot out there today. I mean, if you're not a social guy, generally speaking, or you're not used to socializing with everybody, making that small talk that you normally wouldn't do, pushing the envelope and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone just a little bit will do wonders for you, things you've never even experienced before. And you'll really realize how much social interaction means to most people and how interconnected we really all are, whether or not we choose to acknowledge that or not. And so go out there and talk to the old ladies that you see, you know, coming back from the grocery store, talk to the little kids you see blowing bubbles on the you know, porch of their house or whatever. Talk to the people that you see in the subway, talk to the businessman who's reading the New York times front page article for the 15th time on his way to work. People are dying for social interaction. It's just that nobody knows how to initiate it comfortably. So if you decide, you know what, to hell with comfort, I'm just going to start and do it myself. People will follow suit. And that's a charismatic guy in the making right there. Yeah. There's also, you know, what I've noticed in my own coaching practice is that when, when guys are stumbling, uh, like, well, I don't know how to go up and start to talk to these women or whatever. I realize that in their world, they either only talk to people they know, or they're only interested in talking to people they want to get something from, whether it's their attention or they want to possibly sleep with this person. Otherwise, everybody else on the planet is invisible. They don't care about them because they don't offer them any value, as you would say. And you're saying, take away that value stuff and just interact with people all across the board. Open people up and and get get over this sense of this awkwardness of being in uh, the awkward social situation. Exactly. It's exactly like what I was saying before. If you only talk to people who you want something from, some kind of value, whether or not you, you want to sleep with the girl or you want these guys to think you're cool or you want to you know, get into the club so you're chatting people, out, like whatever it is that you want, you've got to realize that See, the reason people don't talk to people other than the people they want something from is because they think that other people think exactly the same way. You know what I mean? That was a little convoluted, possibly, or a little complicated, but basically it, it's something like this. If you're only talking to people when you want something, consciously or subconsciously, then when you do start talking to people, sure, it's going to seem awkward to you and it's going to seem awkward to them because you're assuming that the only time that you talk to somebody is when you want something. So if you're talking to other people, they're going to assume that you just want something, which isn't really the case. A lot of times, especially the more charismatic people you are, that you interact with, you'll realize that not everybody thinks like that. For example, when I go out and I talk to random people on the street, on the subway, in an airport, whatever, wherever I happen to be, those people will automatically assume that I'm just being a friendly guy, probably because they've seen me talking to everybody else around them. So once you start getting used to being social with everybody and you work those social muscles out and they, you start to kick the rust off, you'll start being super, super social with just about everybody that you run into on a daily basis. And what that does, aside from building your natural small talk and social muscles, is build your charisma. Because the more practice you have interacting with people of all types, and yes, some of them are gonna blow you off and not wanna have a conversation or not wanna engage back with you, but that's fine. 
I mean, what do you care if the guy in the subway who's reading the newspaper ignores your comment? Do you really even care? It reminds me of a powerful quote that we use in the AMP program, which is, relationship is a crappy place to try and get something, but it's a great place to code to create something. It's a, it's a shitty place to, to try to get something, and it's a great place to co-create something. So if the only reason why you're entering your relationships is to get something, then you're bringing that needy, kind of graspy, clingy energy to all that stuff. And who the hell wants to be around that? Yeah, relationships are going to be hard. But if you flip it, and it's just like, hey, what's possible here? Who are you? What's your day like? And, you, and you're bringing that energy of that curiosity. Uh, so much more is possible. Absolutely. I, it, it, that makes perfect sense. All right, let's wrap up the big ideas from this episode. Number one, according to Jordan, charismatic people make more money, get the girls, better jobs, and most importantly, live happier, longer lives. In a nutshell, he's talking about being more outgoing and recognizing that all of us, yes, everyone, has value. Your ability to recognize your own value and the value of others will have a profound impact on every area of your life. Number two, being charismatic means that you're willing to socialize with anyone regardless of their perceived value to you. Strangers, the kid on the subway, janitors, the CEO, beautiful women, celebrities. To the charismatic guy, all of these people are valuable and worthy of his time and attention. He doesn't place anyone above or below. Number three, the charismatic guy doesn't wait for a formal introduction. He takes the initiative and introduces himself. He is confident in who he is, and this makes him magnetic to others. Number four, the charismatic guy inspires goodwill from others because he's been bringing value to their lives. He's always looking for ways to add to the lives of others, and this is reciprocated in a powerful way. Number five, the charismatic guy doesn't fall into the traps set by submissive, dismissive, or competitive guys. He's looking for ways to cooperate and doesn't feel the need to get into a comparative pissing match of any sort. Again, this creates goodwill and disarms the haters and shit talkers. Number six, you can't bullshit anyone into believing you're a confident, charismatic guy. But according to Jordan, you can practice and break through whatever limiting social patterns you've got. Through practice and by confronting your own fears with action, you will gain confidence. After a while, you'll begin to radiate your own version of what it means to be confident and charismatic. And number seven, most of our social hangups boil down to our own sense of personal value. If we see ourselves as unworthy or better than others, we get isolated. If we only talk to people we want to get something from, we put off a crummy vibe. By owning your own value and leaving the judgments of others behind, you'll open up a whole world of possibilities and become a real contributor in this world. Where can we find out more about you, The Art of Charm, and uh, Pick Up Podcast? Well, uh, Pick Up Podcast is a free audio program. It's available at pickuppodcast.com. And uh, for guys who are brand new, there's over 100 hours of audio there. So for guys who are brand new, I'd say go to pickuppodcast.com forward slash best. And that'll bring you to like a start page. It's like the best of Pick Up Podcast. I'm quite frankly, I'm not so convinced that it's the best, but hey, that's what the listeners have, uh, have chosen a while back is a, a good place to start. And then, of course, for training and uh, stuff like that, for live programs out here in Los Angeles, New York, wherever, uh, theartofcharm.com. Again, that's theartofcharm.com uh, is where we have all of our live training stuff and our online resources and all that jazz. Very cool. Jordan, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about charisma. I was very skeptical about this whole concept, thinking that it was like, oh, here you're just going to act a certain way and uh, try to hope that you can bullshit everybody into believing that you're somebody that you're not. And I'd appreciate the, the uh, you guys really have a method to this. And I love the whole distinctions you're making around, um, you know, the six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That, that was really powerful for me. So thanks for sharing that. You got it, man. Thanks for having me on. And uh, of course, if you guys want to hear more from Trip and I, our sweet voices just weren't enough for this, this little 30 minute jaunt we're going to have trip on our show in the very near future so make sure you keep keep your eyes peeled at pickuppodcast.com for trip's interview with us where we drag a lot of your your innermost <laughs> deepest dark secrets about your uh, your change in lifestyle from single rock star dude to uh to married d- daddy rock star dude yeah you guys waterboarded me in that interview you got a lot of stuff out of me so <laughs> totally <laughs> 
<laughs> Absolutely, man. That's, I wouldn't have it any other way. All right, Jordan. Thanks so much, man. You got it, man. Take care. Visit the newmanpodcast.com and subscribe to the New Man Minute. It's a series of short, free videos featuring the best tips and info from the podcast. You can sign up now at the newmanpodcast.com. Thanks for listening.